What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again, and this time we are here with Hoaxed. Great to be able to talk with both of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> it's so awesome to have you here. Your new album, Two Shadows, is absolutely wonderful. An amazing, amazing album to, real. first off, to go into Halloween with. I think it is the ultimate Halloween soundtrack for 2022. For people who haven't heard the full-length album yet, though, could the first uh, three singles that you released, uh, The Call, The Knowing, and Guilty Ones, serve as a good representation of what all of Two Shadows will sound like, or is there a lot more to be discovered on it? I think there's a lot more to be discovered on it. What do you think, Kat? Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that those are three, like those are three of our favorite tracks off the album. I think it's a great way to get introduced, but there are some, uh, we took some different twists and turns on this album that I think were a little bit more unexpected. And uh, there's a few other songs like Where Good Won't Go comes to mind immediately. It's one of my favorite songs in the album and it's just a lot deeper, I think, than what we've released already. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Was there like a preconceived vision of what you wanted uh, this album to sound like? Or as you mentioned before, there was a lot of twists and turns. Was this like a very experimental uh, songwriting process? Yeah, I think it was somewhat experimental. Um, I mean, I think we um, we have our EP out already um, that we released. And so we got a little bit of practice in with that. But I think every time we write a song, it's a bit experimental. And so I think that's why there seems to be a wide variety of different songs on the album. And um, we didn't really have any pre preconceived notions going in. No, I think we just, it just blossomed from us jamming together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we started writing this album before uh, we signed with Relapse. So there's a lot of influence just it's what we wanted to make. And I mean, it, Relapse has given us like as much creative freedom as we want to do whatever we want. But I mean, I'm saying that to like, it wasn't like we conceptualized this album specifically to be released the way that it was. Kim and I were just writing music, having a good time. And it just ended up being a full length album. Does this mm -hmm. ha at all have any relation to your uh, debut EP from last year? Is this like almost a follow up to it or a continuation? Or were these almost con completely separate entities in the in the hoaxed uh, adventure. I think there's a red thread through all of our music. Like, I mean, it's, it's Kim and I writing it all and we have a very like singular vision when we write together. So I think there's always gonna be similarities, but in terms of like, is this like number two in the rock opera? No, I would love one day to like get to that point where we're doing like conceptual albums and each one like builds on the story. But for right now, it's kind of a collection of small vignettes that each song tells its own story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you kind of uh, led me into that question because, like, when I listen to this album, like, uh, when I listen to the Two Shadows album, like, I feel like it flows so well that it does kind of take me on a journey with its use of melody. I know you said that this isn't a concept album, but has, like, maybe a lyrical idea or meaning or just uh, lyrics in general maybe helped influence the sound of the music itself? Or did there need to be music before any lyrics came into play? Uh, we definitely write that we write the music first. I mean, Kim drives with drums, I drive with guitar. So we write all of the lyrics or all of the music first. And then afterwards I put lyrical melody and the actual lyrics on top of it. But typically before I get to that point, Kim and I have had a discussion where we're like, what is this song about? What does this feel like? Um, so when I go into lyric writing, I mean, uh, I've already got like a pretty good sense of like, we know the song is about um, the witch trials where you know people were persecuted or whatever the that's guilty was, whatever the yeah. song might be. We have like a, a somewhat uh, somewhat of a structure before we go and put lyrics on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that um, overall, a lot of our songs, um, especially on this album, but also like I was saying, there is a thread that goes through both. Is that we we do like to um, talk about you know how everything has its price. There's always like, oh. it, no matter what you do, it's always going to come back and, um, you know, come due and you're going to have to pay your dues for what you've done in life. And um, I think we like to, you know, sort of combine that with um, the duality of life and death and what there is between those two worlds. And so this idea of two shadows is those two worlds combining sort of uh, your universal karma and uh what that means not only in this world but in the next mm -hmm. do you want to engage the listener into the meaning as much as the music itself or is there plenty of room for uh, your music to also be open to interpretation 
oh yeah, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, based on the comments we've seen online, what people are like, this song is definitely about this. And we're like, oh, we didn't mean it to be, but great. You know, so it's, yeah, there's always room for interpretation. Like, I mean, people will hear whatever they want in the lyrics. We definitely had thought behind most of them, what they were like specifically about, but it always makes me really happy to hear when people relate to them on a way I didn't even anticipate. Well, I've always said that art is life in itself and it can grow and develop once it is out into the world. Do you think that maybe the meaning of each song could evolve over time or do you want every song to almost be kind of like a snapshot for lack of better words? I think it's inevitable that the song is going to morph over time. Like, uh, I think when you when you say that, the first thought that comes to mind is when you're at like a, a baseball game and like there's a song that was not intended to be played at a baseball game or a basketball <laughs> game to like hype up the crowd, but there it is, you know, being played like uh, Queens, we will rock you. I don't think they meant that to be at a sports arena um, no. or, you know, the white stripes, seven nation army, or even uh, like, won't there it is. I don't, those were just songs. And so it's funny to have, have them translate from one end to the other. Um, but as far as our songs go, it, it's entirely possible that somebody could see something in the songs and take it and morph it into something else. Uh, but, you know, th honestly, that would be that would be exciting. It's kind of like um, yeah. adding a history to your song. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's a positive one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree with that. <laughs> Um, when it comes to the two of you writing together, you mentioned that there is like a singular vision that's involved, but do both of you kind of need to be in the same headspace, like emotionally, um, in order to like, you know, when writing together to make the song sound consistent or could, you know, we're all individuals. We all have our own trials and tribulations. Could maybe you all being in your own little world and maybe, uh, you know, your own different experiences could help maybe add contrast and new elements to the song. Yeah, I think Kim and I have shared so many experiences that it's really hard for us not to be in each other's worlds. <laughs> like yeah. uh, when one of us is going through something, the other one is like, right, we've been friends doing music together for over 10 years. So when one of us is going through something, the other one is like right there with them. So I think we've had very few moments where it's like one of us is in a specific headspace and the other one's not there. Like we're almost always like we're going to write a sad song today or whatever yeah. the vibe is. Um, but I think there's definitely is like we... Uh, we do write things occasionally that don't 100% align and we're like very open to killing songs to like going back and harvesting parts from songs like mm -hmm. we're in, we don't really have a ton of ego when it comes to writing music together it's like we just want to mess around and like figure some stuff out and if we use it great and if uh it's just what we did that day and it doesn't make it onto an album we're also okay with that yeah absolutely like you know and if you know, if, if somebody comes into practice, like if I'm, if I've had a day and I come in and I'm just like, I like, like, it's not connecting. Like I'm, I'm not feeling creative. There is a lot of times you'll get that block where you're like, I just feel like, I my limbs are dumb today. So <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it, you get into your head about like, I'm not being creative. I, like I'm not helping this at all. And then you start to feel down about yourself. But if you turn it around and be like, let's just jam, let's just play like, let's even just go through all the songs you already have. And like, I at least can feel like I can nail those that will eventually translate later into your playing and later into your creative process. Cause maybe even if you didn't write anything that day, you practiced what you were going to write the next time around. So, um, it is, it is healthy to have that open communication and just be like, it's <laughs> you're doing a great job jamming and like playing riffs. I am just not in that space, but you know, allowing, allowing space for cat to write and then also allowing space for um you to just have a day and bring it back the next time is really important do you, yeah do both of you i was gonna ask like do both of you need to be in the presence of each other when cultivating ideas or you know isolation being such a great fuel for creativity is it better to like if you're both kind of like alone in your own elements before you're presenting each other ideas not typically we tend to write the best when we're together um we have both come like come back to practice before with ideas that we formulated away from each other. Typically they get totally blown out of the water and completely changed. I don't know if I've ever brought like an idea to Kim that that idea made it into an album. It's like, we just use it as a starting block to jam on, but we write everything together. That's how we've always done it, especially over uh, quarantine and isolation. Like 
we spent that entire time together writing our EP. So, you know, we, it was a, it was a alone time together. Yeah. I definitely say that there isn't, there isn't a process there where um, we go and write stuff separately and then bring it back and then teach it to each other. Mm -hmm. It's more of, um, I have this idea and then bringing it back and then we workshop it while yeah. we're together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And from the melody that's incorporated into your music to the lyrical content, like, is it all coming from an external source of inspiration? Because, you know, there are songs about, you know, the witch trials, which, you know, as somebody with, with The Crucible being my favorite play of all time, uh, that's amazing <laughs> that you brought that in there. And like, but, you know, there's so much material from movies to art to literature that you could follow that is there almost like research that kind of goes into vault that's involved or is it all coming from like your own personal emotions and maybe your own personal um uh interpretation of it i say both um i mean kim and i are like huge consumers of media we love movies and like we love music and like we just we inhale that kind of stuff so there's definitely a lot of external sources that influences like especially what we write the lyrics about and like the you can hear a lot of different influences in just the way we play certain songs but um a lot of it is like we've internalized it and then especially in the lyrics it's what my impression of what it is like so both i mean i i think all the lyrics are really personal it's something that like kim helped write the lyrics on this latest album too and they're all things that like feel really personal to us, but they're also based on like, we'll go back to the witch trial when like, we obviously did not experience that, but we just told a lot of similarities and how people could be persecuted. And like, especially in you know being women, there was a lot of things we related to in those stories that way. And then we internalized it and wrote a song about it. So I think, I think both. Yeah. When you're working on a song for a long period of time, because, you know, sometimes you are working on a song for hours, days, weeks, do you find it maybe like harder to like maintain that energy or that emotion that initially sparked it or uh or and like you do you like to sort of feel the same way that when you finish a song as you do when you uh start it yeah i think that uh it definitely happens a lot where i mean we've been writing music together for a really long time so we're definitely used to that we're used to having an idea and it feels like a fire and then you run with it and then you hit a wall and when you hit that wall, you can either uh, work it to death <laughs> or you can leave it for a while and then come back to it. And sometimes when you, I mean, it's it's with anything, with uh, writing a piece of paper with like, you know, we edit uh, video and stuff like that. Sometimes when you leave it and you come back and you rewatch it, you re-listen to it or you reread it it sounds completely different and you're and all of a sudden you're re-inspired and you can go back and say oh i know how to get past that wall um it definitely helps to leave stuff other times uh we'll leave it and we can't just leave it there we either have to like kat said we have to harvest it we have to kill it we have to do something with it mm -hmm. and so sometimes that's the tough call is do we keep working on this and if we do and we're still not getting anywhere then it's up for grabs <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah which is probably the scariest feeling sometimes like you sometimes feel so attached to something and then like just the idea it's like you you, you just see the hammer coming over it like uh you just like please don't please don't please don't so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's funny though because it's it's not that bittersweet i mean the, there have been times where we've been trying to write a song about a certain subject for so long and we're like dang this song still isn't gonna be it like it's just not working the way that we want it to but i'm i'm never really that sad to let it go because it's really easy for me as a drummer to harvest out beats yeah like, it's really easy for me to say well i know how to play this now i've been playing it for weeks or months or whatever and i'm i've got that now in my toolkit for later when we're writing a song i can bust that out and it's just it's nice to have that um you know I still wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm still proud of it. So yeah, it's it's not that scary. What sucks is that you're gonna be like, okay, well now we have to start over on a new song. Um, right. Yeah. Does that yeah, and I think oh. so many of our songs come from a song that we wrote and then we're like, no, oh, we hate that chorus, but like we're just pretty used to it anyway. <laughs> it's something we do at most of our barely any of our songs 
we write it and then that's how you hear it on the album. I mean, they change so much. And, and as you write more and more music, does the songwriting process, because I feel like there is an art to songwriting, regardless of what genre you're playing, there is sort of like a, I feel like there has to be some sort of like skill that goes into songwriting, whether it's, you know, writing something that's emotionally captivating or whatever. But like, do you mm -hmm. find it, does it, does songwriting get easier as you write more songs or does it get harder as you think you utilize every idea you possibly had at that moment? <laughs> uh, oh man. I'd, I'd say both, but mostly <laughs> I think it gets easier um, because uh, I think it's a, definitely a muscle and it gets easier the more that you work that muscle and the more you get into that creative mindset uh, and the more practice you get at um, editing mm -hmm. things, at yeah. cooling the fat, you know, or trimming the herd or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. And then there's also that issue where um, there's only so many notes and like so many ways you can pair notes in, that, in songs. So it's like, you have a toolbox, but it's, you can get pretty creative with it, but it's like, those are the notes you have. And like, everybody's paired them together in the past before. So there's like a, a delicate dance there of like, yeah, it gets easier, but also like, you don't want to repeat yourself too much or like do too many callbacks to past songs. Like you want it to feel new and fresh and something that excites us and then other people will relate to. So I, I think it's definitely both. It's like, you're narrowing the focus, but also you feel more comfortable writing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, I was interviewing uh, the band from India, Bloodywood, a fantastic, fantastic band. And they said that the harder things get, the closer you are to your goal when you are finishing a song. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, I don't, like, it makes, it reminds me of also like stories of um, really successful artists, like starting out and writing a song and then having somebody else be man, I love that song. What are you talking about? I just wrote it. And I'm like, no, no, that's on the radio, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah. Okay, well. Pick someone else off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me guess what your favorite band is. The band you sound exactly alike. Yeah, yeah. right? Yep. Oh, gosh. I wish I knew what that band was. I would love to listen to them for more inspiration. We're like, yeah. I don't know I'm figuring that out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, forgive the... Uh, uh, the what's the record name mean question, but I do want to know, is the two shadows uh, like almost an external metaphor of you two, or is this like a, a portrayal of like the shadows of two individuals completely outside of who you are? I think that it worked out really well, the name two shadows and having two of us in the band, but it was uh, uh, definitely a coincidence. And it's actually more of the idea that one person has two shadows and so it's a the on the album cover there's the signpost that says two shadows and the concept is that there is a place um that's sort of in between worlds that you would happen upon as a wandering soul or perhaps as somebody who needs to go there is being called to that place for a specific reason to settle um sort of a debt with one of those shadows so when you go there, all of a sudden you you end up having two shadows, one that's your own and one that isn't. And so it's a process of figuring out what that second shadow is. Is it an evil entity that is attached to you? Um, is it uh, something that you have uh, unsettled business in this world or the next? And I think we also really liked the idea that there is no running away from your shadow. It's something that's permanently attached to you. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the idea that there was two of them, like sets up the idea of duality and also there's two of us and that just happened to work yeah. out perfectly. And it's our second album that we've done in this band, which I mean, exactly. well, first full length, but second thing we've released, which just, yeah, it all kind of just happened. Yeah. <laughs> all lied. Yeah. It, and was were you experiencing this process? Because, you know, one of my favorite quotes is you cannot escape yourself no matter what you do. So like, uh, is that like is was this like an exploration that you had, like with the making of this? Or did you all know that this was going to be the topic that we address at the very beginning? No, we had no idea that that was the topic from the very beginning. <laughs> I mean, I think we were probably like four or five songs in before we were like, let's talk about what this album title and like what the the full theme of this album should be. 
Um, but Kim actually happened upon the name Two Shadows, and as soon as she brought it back, we were both just like, oh, that's 100% what we've been working towards. It just fit really well. Yeah, it definitely was uh, sort of a torturous feeling trying to be like, what, how do you, how do you combine all of these songs? How do you name them all? Uh, like, what is the common thread that unites them all? What, like, that that's such a torturous feeling because you think that, you know, everything is so different in your mind. And then when you finally come up with that spark or idea of what is truly going on in all of these stories, like, what am I actually, what are we writing about? Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's really, um, it's really gratifying and it also helps um, bring clarity to your art, to your own art. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. And the final question I wanted to ask you is, is because you, uh, is because hoax is from one of my favorite happening scenes right now. And that is the scene of Portland, um, from, yeah. from the history of Portland, you know, it's the home of Akalak and the home of toxic Holocaust and so many great bands, but with, you know, bands like dying wish coming out of there, uh, as well as, uh, onto others and Yab and so many, you know, the Yab has been killing it for years, but uh, I just want to know how has the scene in Portland kind of been over the years? It almost seems like I used to think it was like a very doom oriented scene, but it almost seems like it's been getting more and more diverse as I'm hearing new bands every day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we love we love the Portland metal scene. Like we're both like that's part of the reason why we're making the music that we're making. Like it's just it's a thriving, very diverse scene. Like you're onto it. Like what you said is really true. Yeah. And um like growing up in Portland, there were a ton of venues to go and see shows at. And so that was just part of the um at least my culture growing up was going out and seeing shows. There were tons of uh, house shows, tons of um, underage venues. And so that was really cool. And I think that was really important for shaping the scene that it is that exists today. Mm -hmm. And I think also there there's a lot of overlap in scenes here. Like um, there there's going to be a lot of the same faces at uh, the uh, punk show that there are going to be at the doom show, which was huge here for a while. Yeah. Um, and there's also going to be the same faces at, you know, the black metal show and at the, you know, new wave of traditional heavy metal show. Like there's, there's a lot of overlap and it's just a love for the music and a love for the, um, for the scene itself, like the people itself, the community, um, and keeping that local music scene thriving is uh, very important to everybody here. So it, yeah. it does feel really um, like a, a welcoming community for sure. And I think yeah. that helps the, you know, facilitate good art. Yeah. Oh, it, for sure, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and just the underground too. Uh, there's this uh, band, uh, I think they're from Portland. I know they're from Oregon. I don't know if they're from Portland, but uh, this band called Vintercy, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, V-I-N-T-E. Oh, yeah. They're like Neo Bliviscaris, like that avant-garde sort of stuff. There's like, there's <laughs> so much. Like, like people would think like, oh, is this band from Sweden? No, they're from Portland. Yeah. Oh, is this band from the Massachusetts hardcore scene? No, they're from Portland. Yeah. Like, yeah. so it's, it just seems like that there's no one genre to define that. Like, you know, New York being hardcore, Boston being metalcore, Tampa being death metal, mm -hmm. which I think is great. I think that is, as you said, like you'll see metalcore fans at the black metal show or at the death metal show. It's seems yeah. to be a very unifying thing yeah. yeah yeah i definitely agree with that i just i think that our metal scene has always been uh pretty accepting like there's not a ton of gatekeeping just at least in the portland local scene so it's always like allowed other things to thrive pretty well um so that's i mean yeah there's just a lot of diversity a lot of acceptance and i mean we're all we're all outcasts just like coming together listening to metals <laughs> so yeah. it fits yeah. Definitely, definitely. A lot of scenes can learn a thing or two from Portland. <laughs> so uh, before we go, I want to thank you both so much for your time. And again, thank you for this amazing album. This is the soundtrack to Halloween 2022. Uh, is there just oh. is there just um, anything else that you would like to promote in terms of gigs or uh, what could we be expecting for the Two Shadows uh, cycle? Um, any chance you could be coming to New York soon? We would love to have you here. 
Oh, we'd love to make it. There's there's nothing to uh, announce yet, but we're hoping to make it out there soon. Yeah, we are working on it. So yeah. we were there last spring and we kicked off actually a tour there and like cannot wait to get back. It's like counting down. Like I can't wait to get back. So what? yeah, we're working on it. We'll, we'll when, ho hopefully have something soon to share with everyone. When and where did you play uh, last year? Uh, the Gramercy? Gramercy? With, yeah. With who? So we were... We were with Amorphous and uh, Owada. And oh. Sylvain. Oh, no, Sylvain wasn't there yet. That's I was, right. yeah. I was supposed to be at that show. I was supposed to be oh, at no that way. damn show, and I had an emergency that day. I was like, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we were sorry. there. Well, th well, thanks for making me regret missing that show even more. <laughs> it was a fun show. It was, actually, it was the kickoff of the tour, so it was like, it was a... You know, it's a heavy show. Yeah, show. yeah. <laughs> I was, tone, but it was great. I was there this past Saturday for Lorna Shore, and uh, the whole venue was just one giant mosh pit. It was like a giant cheese <laughs> grater. <laughs> so, yeah. But oh, yeah. thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Hoax. Be sure to check out Two Shadows, October 28th, the ultimate Halloween soundtrack for 2022. We will see you next time on Heavy New York.